What is going on my friends, it's Amit, you're watching Dev Dreamer, and welcome to lesson 50 in our JavaScript series. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about recursion. As always, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Also, be sure to ring that bell and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson 50. In this lesson, let's learn all about recursion. Now, if you've done a fair bit of programming before, then recursion is probably something you've heard of or perhaps you're already familiar with. But if not, not to worry, by the end of this lesson, you're gonna know exactly what it is and what it's used for. So let's start then with understanding what recursion actually is. So recursion or a recursive function is a function that calls itself inside the function body. And then it's also responsible for stopping itself. Remember, functions are also known as first class objects. In other words, we can use functions pretty much anywhere. We can have functions inside of functions. We can pass a function as an argument to another function. And you'll start to see this a lot more over the coming few lessons as we start to dig into advanced functions. Okay, so the idea then behind recursive functions is that inside the function body, we call the function itself. Now the danger here though is if we don't also provide some sort of condition to stop that function call, then we'll be stuck in an infinite loop. Let's take a look at an example. So in my text editor here, let's give this a name of greeting. It's not going to take any parameters. And inside the function body, the first thing we're going to do is just do console.log and let's just say hello world. And then after this console log, I'm going to invoke this function. So the name of this function is greeting. So down here, I'm going to say greeting and then also invoke that function. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to crash the browser because what we've got here is an infinite loop. So if I call greeting here, okay, so I'm just invoking this function. Once I save, what it's going to do is it's going to look for this greeting function, which is this function up here. Okay, it's then going to console log hello world. And then the next thing it's going to do is it's going to invoke greeting again. Now this function is called greeting. So it's going to go back and re-invoke this function. It's going to come down. It's going to console log hello world again. And then we're back to the same invocation of this function. So it's going to go back and it's going to keep going over and over and over again. So it's going to be stuck in an infinite loop. So let's go ahead and save. Okay, so we get hello world printed multiple times as you can see, and then the browser crashes. Okay, so let's just uh, remove this and just resave. Okay, so that was an example of an infinite loop. As you can see, we must always write some sort of code, some sort of condition to stop the recursion. This code or this condition that we write is called the base case. Now, if all that sounds familiar, then you'd be right because that's exactly what we can do with loops, right? We can have a for loop and we can specify a variable, a condition, etc., etc. However, sometimes recursive functions are a more elegant way to perform this action. Let's take a look at a new example now of a countdown timer. So let's get rid of this. And first we'll look at doing this with a normal for loop and then we'll use recursion to see the difference between the two. So let's first create an arrow function and we'll call this countdown. It's going to take a number parameter. So we'll just say num. And then inside the function body, we're going to create our for loop. So I'm going to say for, let i be assigned the value of num. And then we want to check to see if i is more than or equal to zero. And seeing as though it's a countdown, we're going to decrement this. So i minus minus, and then down here, we're simply going to console log the value of i. Okay, now what we can do is we can invoke this function, so countdown, and the argument that we supply, the number, is basically going to be what we start our countdown from. So I'm going to say seven. Now, if this was confusing or it's not familiar to you, then I do have a lesson on for loops. I'll leave a link to it somewhere so you can check that out. But now if we go ahead and save, in the console, we get a countdown. So we get seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, down to zero. Okay, now let's recreate this using a recursive function. So let's get rid of this. And for this, I'll provide some comments along the way as well, so you know exactly what's going on. So first then, let's say log the number. So very simply, we're gonna say console.log and then our num parameter. Okay, so at this rate, if we just clear this, if we were to save now, we'll just get seven in the console. Okay, like so. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to take our number and minus it by one. So here I'll just say minus num by one. So here we can just say num minus one. And of course, let's go ahead and store this in a variable. So we'll say const and let's call this updated num. Okay. And now finally, we need to provide a base case. So a condition that will stop the recursion so that we're not stuck in an infinite loop. So this is going to be the base case. So I'm going to say if, let's 
do a simple if statement. So we can say if updated num is more than or equal to zero, then we want to continue. So we're gonna say if that's the case, then invoke our countdown function. Now for the parameter, this is going to be updated num. So every time it loops through, we wanna use the new updated number that's going to be num minus one. So in here, we're going to say updated num. And so now if you go ahead and save, Perfect, we get seven down to zero, and we've done so using recursion. Now, obviously we've got the same result using a for loop and recursion, but the difference is in the background. So why should we use a recursive function here instead? Well, the for loop approach uses extra variables, so the i variable each time, to track the current number after each loop. However, the recursive function simply passes along the updated number each time we invoke the function again. So here, no extra state is needed. Okay, so that's all about recursion. Let's go ahead and summarize. So recursive functions are functions that call themselves within the code block. We must always specify a goal or rule for stopping that call, and this is known as the base case. Otherwise, we'll get stuck in an infinite loop. And finally, whilst recursive functions and loops are similar, sometimes recursion is a more elegant approach to solve the problem. Okay, so let's take a look at your tasks for this lesson. So just a single task for this lesson then. So for your task, I want you to create a recursive function that counts from one to 10. And I want you to log this to the console. Make sure you include a base case, okay? Because as you've seen, if we don't, then the browser will crash. So I'll pause the video, try this out, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the answer. How'd you go on then? Let's see. So first of all, we need to go ahead and create a function. So I'm going to create an arrow function here. Let's call this counter and this will take a variable called num. And then inside this, we want to console log num. So we're going to say console.log num. And just to make this a bit clearer down here, when we invoke this function, we're going to say counter, and then we're going to start at one. Okay, so the first thing we should see in the console is going to be the number one. Next, we need to add one to this number. So I'm going to say const updated num, and this will simply be num plus one. And then finally, we need to supply our base case. So I'm gonna say if updated num is less than or equal to 10. So as long as that condition is true, then we want to continue to invoke this function. So I'm gonna say counter, and for the argument, we'll pass in our updated num. Okay, so that should all work fine. Let's go ahead and save. And in the console, we get the numbers one to 10 printed out. So guys, well done on completing that task. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to learn all about closures. Closures can often be a difficult concept to understand, but we're going to go through it step by step with a ton of examples. So really important lesson coming up. Be sure to tune in. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you on the next one.